Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We are welcoming Susan Greathouse as our guest artist today, and we're looking forward to a fabulous presentation. Thank you, Susan, for sharing your time and your talents with IPAT. You're very welcome. All right. I guess we'll get started. So um, I'll just let you know a little bit about myself because some people don't know who I am. I'm actually originally Canadian, and I, I currently live in Corpus Christi, Texas, and have for quite a while now. I uh, started painting in the in the late seventies in uh, Canada, and I have previously been the president of the Porcelain Artists of Canada. Currently, the president of uh, China Painting Teachers of Texas, and also on the executive of the State Federation. So I welcome you to join any of these organizations, including IPAT, um, and support these organizations so that we can continue to grow our art. I'm honored to uh, be asked to uh, teach. Um, it's hard to do something in a short period of time, but I'm going to take just about an hour because I think after that, everybody um, loses their focus. But I'm going to focus primarily on the second fire, but I'm going to start with talking about how to begin. Uh, I really enjoy doing the shells and living on the coast. Um, there's quite a demand for shells uh, from my various customers. So if you have any questions, you can also put it in the chat. And if I see it, I can respond to it or we can respond to questions at the end. Everybody hopefully can hear me. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch my camera. Okay, so this is um this is the line drawing that you uh, that you got. And then this is a picture of the first fire. So there's the line drawing that was uh, I think sent out with the uh, with the link to the Zoom. And then uh, you had a picture of the first fire and, it, and I'll talk to you about how to get to this point. And then I thought the focus today would primarily be on how to move from the first fire to the second fire, which I think most people find the most difficult. So just a, a few comments to start. I'm going to um, share, share my screen here with some content. So everybody can see um, this, hopefully the supply list. If you can't, you need to let me know, come on and, and tell me. So uh, you also had a list of this. So this is uh, the supplies to do what you, you need to do to, to get started. And I'm going to stop sharing that for a minute and I'm going to share a little bit more here. I'm going to share this. So this is my contact information. So that's my email. If down the road you decide you want to, to uh, connect with me, this actually is a study that I did. But um, it's an interesting study because we did it with Texas uh, teachers. It's a combination of putting the shells with pearls, and that fits really well. So um, when you're talking about painting anything, you're looking at design. So it doesn't matter whether you're doing the uh, rectangular tray or a square tray or a form like this, you're really looking at, at establishing your design. So selecting the shells that you want and coming up with the design that you want. So you're thinking about the line of design. You're thinking about um, the unity, like how can you put it together so the pieces make sense and they, they go together in a united way. You're looking at the masses, whether you want to have create uh, large masses uh, or you want single single shells and you want to move around your piece depending on the shape of your piece you want a balance color so you're thinking about as you select the shells and you're thinking about the color tone that you want to do you're thinking about how do i balance color within the design so when i do this you can see that the yellow brown colors repeat here here and then as I go down, whoops, find it again. And then down here, there's even more yellow brown items. The same with the bluey colors, the bluey tones repeat or into the molds. 
So you're trying to balance your color along with the size of your objects and then have movement through your piece. So you're also thinking also about texture because lots of your lots of your shells are really textured, some are not. So you want to really think about um, moving them through your piece and not having all the textured pieces in one spot. So really, um, the design is probably super important as you move through your piece. So I'm going to just stop sharing this. And when I look at, so I look at this piece now down here, and I see that I've got, this is a, these are very busy pieces. Uh, this is a large piece. I'm thinking about if I'm going to do this piece and we're going to do it today, how to do background on this. So if I'm going to feed water through here, I'm going to feed sand through here. How do I want to establish that on my design? So, so it, it doesn't matter what you paint. Uh, you can't paint it if you don't understand it. So that's the other part of it is when you're looking at your at shells and you're trying to paint a shell, you have to understand the shell. So it's really important to think about the anatomy of the shell. So you want to get some good pictures of that and you want to get some different views. So you can start with, there's some great pictures out on the internet. Line drawings are simple. And also there's some great sketches and things. So obviously you don't want to just use some artist's sketch that they may not have, may have sketched incorrectly, but you can look at a variety and you can say, gee, that's a good one. And it simplifies my subject matter. So then you, that might help you when you're trying to think about how to paint the shell or how to draw the shell. So don't forget to go out and try to identify really good resources. And then there's a variety of shells. So for instance, if we're going to do the Nautilus shell, don't just look at one. Identify more than one that you so they as you can see you can have stripes all the way through an Nautilus shell you can have them partially on the shell so you can have different orientations so depending on how you want to structure your piece you may want to have more of a front view more of a sideline view so you can go and find good good resources and use a variety of resources and then of course there's nothing like the real thing. So this one is broken, but there's the real thing, right? So if we, if we take this and set it on maybe the white background here, I mean, there's nothing like having a real, uh, real resource to look at as well. So, and then from there, you identify the characteristics of that shell that are really important. It's sort of like doing a portrait. What are those, you know, does this person have a big nose? Do they have really bushy eyebrows? Do they have a... Um, uh, a nice smile with really large lips. What is it that you need to capture? And then when I go to paint and um, what I showed you with the contact information is a study that I did. Um, I usually include within a study or when I'm teaching a sample of real shells. I don't want to just um, paint off of someone. I don't want them just looking at my study, for example and my piece of work and saying, oh, well, that's what she did, I'll just copy it. So for instance, this is the, this is the original piece of, of the one that's in the study, but those, that's my work. It's much better to also then have pictures of real, real shells that I can look at and I can use as my references. So if you, I'm going to paint shells and find some of those references, put them together on a sheet of paper so you can refer to them. So I did that for this one. I have another piece here I with other shells. And again, if I'm thinking about an orientation where maybe there's water and I want the shell in water, how would that look, right? Are there shadows? Where are the shadows? Um, and so I, this this really helps to set up your your design. And then lastly, the uh, the um, conch shell is relatively complex. So again, different colors, um, different slightly different shapes, different textures. Which one do I want? Or if I'm doing an oyster shell with textures, which we will do today with pearls, how would I how would I go and do that? 
Maybe I want some sand. How would I think about putting sand into my work? So find yourself some good resources, put them together and um, so that you can use them effectively. All right. So what I would like to do next, I don't know who all's on, but I hope that, that most of you are skilled painters, but if you're not, you got the line drawing. So just so for people that perhaps aren't as skilled, if you have the line drawing, you can sketch this on, you can use your, your liner brush and you can draw it on. And if you do that, then you should use an open medium with not very much oil so that it doesn't dry so that you can still move around the pieces, but you could, you could sketch this on, you could sketch it on with a pencil. I don't recommend sketching it on with a Sharpie, a Sharpie pen, because it, then it's like to paint by numbers and it's hard to move it. It's hard to see what you've got. So if you uh, want, you can trace it on. So this is carbon paper. You can uh, tape it to your work. Usually I just tape it to the top part so I can pick it up as I'm going and look to see if I've missed anything. I put the carbon paper with the carbon face down. Make sure that it's totally under. So if it's a smaller piece than your image, just make sure that you're wherever you're using your stylus to trace that you have the carbon underneath and then pick up as you go to see whether you've got all of the critical elements. And then in the end, you should have a tracing that looks something like this. And um, the better you do the tracing, the less you kind of have to ad lib it. Probably when I think about a critical elements on this, I, this is a really important edge. You don't want it super bumpy. So that would be an edge that we really want to look at. Uh, try not to, to go over your image more than once because then you get thick graphite buildup and try to use graphite that's um, not really dark, really, um, really, really dark. So... Are there any questions there so far? I don't see any coming up. So far, so good? All right, I see a thumbs up, so we'll, we'll move forward. Um, I'm just going to go back to this picture for a moment. And I'm gonna, I talked a little bit about critical elements in your pieces. So I'm going to tell you that on this, on this piece, not only is, this a critical element that you get this nice and straight. But this part here where the shell bends up is a critical element. So when I look at this real shell, this piece here is really critical. This, this line here is really critical. It goes around the eye into the black head. So that those are critical there. When I look at this uh, at the uh, sand dollar, it it doesn't have quite a distinct star in it. But if you if you look at a real sand dollar picture, it does have a little bit of a kind of um, slightly blurred star in it. So it, it's going to have kind of a light area in there. What's really important are these areas here, and and it's there's a line. There's a line, and then there's little. There's little lines like this on each one of these. So there's a line, there's a line, and then there's fine hairs like this on either side, and they don't go all the way up. There are five of these little oval shapes here that go that are open and dark and a little one here. So when you're looking at your, your resources, you really want to capture those pieces of that in terms of the starfish. And then where it bends up like this, any place, it's like doing an iris or any kind of flower that has a ruffle. Any place where this is up, the light is hitting it. So the shadow will be 
on this side and this side, and this will be light. So this will be light, and this is the area that will be darker because that's a dip and that's where the shadows would be. So that's kind of the critical elements of the, of the sand dollar. Um, the sea and enemy. I try not to make the center super round. Like I don't, it's not real interesting if you make it really round like that. So I try to make it kind of more offset a little bit. So that's my artistic license. There's also a little rim around there, right here. And then the lines that come down. We will be today doing this in the second fire with base for raised gold to get to raise those dots up that are on the sea and enemy, which makes it almost 3D. What's important there is that this an enemy is is pouching out. So th these dots that are sitting in here are bigger. And they get smaller as they go down and they go smaller as they go up. So that will be an important element when we, we get to that. I don't think I need to say much about the oyster other than you just, you're looking at the regular outside edge. So you're trying to make this interesting so you can be jiggly as you want, make it nice and interesting. And then the same with the outside edge here. So they have, they are coming in all sorts of different colors. You can make them nice and textured. So that's kind of fun. And if you want to put a pearl in, you can. And if you decide to put a pearl in, it's usually next to the dark part of the shell so that you get that contrast. Then the last critical element, and, and I'm just going over these few because of the time element. The last um, one is the, is the starfish. So it's just got a star in it. So some people say to me, well, Susan, it doesn't have a star in it. Well, it does, but it might not be really evident. So, and the, these come in all different colors and speckles and spots, and some are a little smooth and some are textured. So this is probably your pretty standard starfish. It has a star here. So if you see it here, you can see that there is a star. So that's important when you're painting. And the points of the star go down the legs of the starfish. So pretty much, you don't have to be totally perfect, but you need to be able to kind of do that. So that, so that, those are really important. And then there will be shadow in here. And if the sun is coming this way, then there's going to be shadow in here. There's going to be shadow over here. And there's good. So this, the shadow is going to be really important to get the shape of the fish. And I try to get so they're not just totally flat. So like this one, you can see it's bent a little bit. Kind of, I want it to be kind of different, right? I don't want it just to be flat sticking on my piece. So when you're painting, if, if you don't like it, look at some pictures and think about, well, gee, would that look better if I just bent that a little bit or if I made this one a little fatter or I make this one a little shorter? And then you can see in this design, the connectedness. I've connected the pieces together and I've uh, I, then I've added my my seaweed here and I want the seaweed to look like it's kind of moving so when I put it in I've I've put it in in such a way that it's kind of like the the waves are going this way and it's kind of moving so I am a textured kind of movement sort of person does that kind of help you with things to think about when you go to be paint to painting this has anybody done the first fire on this piece yet? No, I just see no. Okay, so we're going to just take this off here. So we're, we'll do, we'll start the first fire. And, uh, and then I'll show you one where I've got more of the first fire done of a different one. And then, uh, and then we'll move to this one because I think this is where people they get to this point, they get this kind of tossed on, they get it fired and then they think, well, where to from here? So I thought we'd better spend our time focusing on the second fire rather than on just the first one, just painting it. And I tried painting it, it takes a fair amount of time. The other thing you'll notice is that with this particular Nautilus shell, you can see that there's nothing here. There's nothing here, there's nothing here. 
that's fine. Today, we will shadow that and we will make that appear. So don't feel like you have to fill everything in. It's nice to have some lost ed edges. All right, any questions before I move forward? All right, don't see any yet. So I'm going to show one more thing. So you can do uh, the, um, the pieces in a natural style or you can do them in monochrome. So you don't have to do them, you know, like you're the artist, you can, you can pick and choose what you want to do. So in this case, I've done blues, blue, greens. So um, on this particular piece, it's not finished. Again, it's just the first fire, but you, this is an elongated piece, but still going to be effective uh, when it, when it's done. And it's just going to be a bit more modern. I know someone who has a, likes these colors and I thought, well, I'm just going to paint them in this color. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll start painting. And uh, so we've, if you find that that um, you have a tendency to wipe out your, your tracing, you can cover this with saran so that you don't, you, you're not gonna wipe off your tracing. You put a piece of saran wrap or plastic wrap over here and peel it back as you go. Um, I usually paint from left to right so I don't get my hands in it. Uh, the rule of thumb is to try to do the um, use the best uh, the biggest brush that you need to do the job. I'm just going to show you. I I did so people can kind of see it. I, these are just some of the paints, but that I'm that I'll be using today. But this gives you a good idea of what they are. So if you want a limited palette, you can pretty much get by with this. Yellow brown number one, yellow brown number two, or pecan tan mauve, soft rose or a nice pink, ruby, portrait dark brown, which is a great shadow color, rich brown, hair brown, black, copan gray or a nice uh, darker gray, a light gray, sometimes they call it silver gray. And this is Baker's Brown and Baker's Brown is an old color, but it's a really nice color. So that might be something, it's kind of a, a red brown, uh, you could, there's all sorts of names for it. I finally, I had so many browns that I actually made a brown palette because I, I thought, well, what are these colors? So I actually have a brown palette. So I could, and I fired each one of these and I actually put on the lid of my small palette what they all were. And so now when I go and I do shells or I'm painting animals or whatever this is a great like if I'm painting deer this is a great palette with all my browns and now I don't just have just go to my standard three I I have more choices and I I recommend doing that I also have a red palette as well uh, for my red paints all right so I'm going to start painting so I'm going to start uh with with painting the seashell first the um So I like, and I did not put ivory out or cream. So I also have pre-mixed paints. So, and I, so when I travel, I, I don't recommend doing this all the time, but I also teach. So I have pre-mixed paint, so I don't have to sort of stop and find my paint. And then I, I travel with these with a little sign in them for the little uh, TSA and little man that these are just mixed with mineral pigments and they're just, benign paints and here's my phone number if you need to talk to me so that's a it's a it's a good way to have it so I'm just going to get a bit of cream out it's it's a good base color you could use magnolia the only thing is is if you're using um oranges and yellows, you've got to be careful with the magnolias and the cream. The yellows might get eaten out. You can use mixing yellow safely, but not um, your silver yellows or your sunshine yellows. They have a tendency to eat it out. So I'm just picking up. And I don't know that you'll be able to see this, but I'm going to be picking up. So 
some cream color here. I'm just going to fully load my brush. I'm going to start filling in my sand dollar here with just a bit of color, just using the cream color as a base. It will also give me some tooth for the second fire. So I'm just basically washing that color in here, trying not to wipe out all my lines. Now, remember I said about these little notches that there's going to be shadow on each side. So I'm going to pick up some light gray. I could even pick up a little bit of portrait dark brown and just come and put some color. And I'm going to use a little bit more so you can see it on either side of that and just kind of pull some of it out to the edge. I don't want the same color everywhere. So I'm going to pick up just the gray now. Put some gray towards the edge. And I'm just trying to get that idea that the sand dollar is a not totally flat, but it's, it's not really humped too. It's just there. I could use my two shades of gray. Now remember that this is on top of here, so I want to keep this lighter than that. Can you see well enough? Is it clear? No? Let me try something else here. That's better. Turning off some lights here. All right, that's better there, right? That's better. Okay, just keep letting me know. All right, so I'm just putting that in. So you want this to stay lighter than this, but this is going to, some of this head's going to be black. All right, so I basically got cream. I've got some gray, a little bit of portrait dark brown, particularly where the wrinkles are. I'm going to um, put a little bit of shadow. Remember I said there's a little star here. I'm going to put just a little bit of shadow on the far side of the star, not the inner aspect. And then I'm going to start working up the little oval. So I'm going to use my pointer brush, so my detail brush. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of portrait dark brown. I could have a little bit of gray in it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these little holes, but don't fill them totally full. You want to have a bit of light in them. So just, I'm just, I've got the most paint on my brush right now, so I'm just going around and putting a little bit in each. Then I'm going to take a little off my brush and I'm going to smear it into the holes just enough. I don't want it to be totally a dark hole. I'll shadow them next time. I want them to be nice and oval. Some of them can be a bit irregular in shape. Can you see that okay? I think so. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing with this, but it doesn't have to be the same, the same color. It can be a little lighter. Now, remember in here, this has the two lines. So I'm going to do two lines. And I'm going to put the lines up against my oval. One line, two lines, and it's just a line. And if I make it too wide, I can come in with my wipeout tool. I can just skinny it up a little bit. So these are two lines and they don't go all the way to the end of the oval. And I do one here. I do one there. So you can clearly see these when you look at a real picture. One here.
one there. And they're thin, they're not super, super thick. Right, the same thing, I can pick up my wipeout tool and I can skinny them up. Every time I use my wipeout tool, I bounce it on my piece of paper to make sure that I don't have a buildup coming off of my wipeout tool. And you, it's hard to see this because I've got the, the graphite on there, but it'll be there, it'll be present when the graphite disappears in the firing. I forgot that there's a little, so on one of these, usually the one that's closest in, there's a little dot here too. There's one little dot. So it's like an explanation mark almost. All right, now you have, uh, you have choices to make. You can take your brush, maybe step down a size in your brush. And you want to kind of pull a bit of light off the top. So just come and kind of, pull some light so you so it looks like the edge that it's light on the top and so the light's hitting it and that the edge is on the side and it's shaded now sometimes what i'll do is i'll even take my finger and i'll pull my finger down and pull it out and then when i do that i just kind of smooth the edge but i want that i want that difference in color between here and there so I'm turning again, I'm putting my finger down. I'm just using the this part of my finger and I'm just pulling it out. It gives that look that the, that the shell is slightly humped up. And then one more time here. Now I'm gonna look at where these little humps are here and I may have to intensify a little triangle of shadow on either side. One here, one there. Can you see how that makes that wrinkle? Can you see how it makes it kind of look like it's standing up a bit? So you can see here I could, I'm using my brushes pretty dry. They're clean, but I'm dry. I can come and I can also lighten up that little bit on top. So these are like little triangles of shadow. And it's going to help to make that shell not look quite as flat. Everybody with me? So, and then you can take a stippler or you can just take a brush if you want and you can brush this out, but it's it's good enough. Yeah, I can see a star, but it's not it's not going to be like the star that I'm going to see down here on my starfish. I'm going to move from here now to the to the Nautilus shell. And I can see that we're in 30 minutes in, so I'm not going to paint the whole thing, but I'm going to pick up yellow brown on my brush, yellow brown number one. And it the, the shell is going to be lightest through here. The light is going to hit the shell in here like this. So my lightest colors are going to be in here my darker colors are going to get darker toward the edges and in the center. And that's and it, it, it really, really important to get the, the, the curve, to get that idea of the light. So I'm using my lightest value, yellow-brown number one, and I'm coming in here with my little square shader. So this is like a number one quill. And just, well, you got it on your brush, come along and put it along these lines. So you can be looking at a shell like this, and can you see that these kind of go like this? They have they have texture and they go like this. They have, you can see the lines and they're, they're not just totally smooth, perfectly, whatever, they're irregular. So it's important to be looking at your resource material once you've laid your paint in there. And so this is my central area that's gonna be the lightest. I can come back with my brush in a minute and I can take my brush like this and I can make those little lines. So 
I lay the paint in and I can make those little lines. So it looks, it's already getting a little bit of texture. This is my lightest value. Can you see? So this is my lightest value. All right. Now I could have at the start of this, I put in my ivory or my cream on this part of the shell. So some of the shells have these lines all the way through. I don't find that that interesting. So I only like to do part of it this way and I like to keep part of it clear. So I'm just picking up cream now. And before I do any further, I'm going to just lay in the cream, which will take away the shine from my china. It will give it a bit of a tooth. And if you lay it in, try to lay it in the way the shell goes. So you just get a general amount, not too thick, but you're laying it in the way the shell goes. And I know that this is really light, so it's hard for you to see it. So think about the way the shell goes. Goes like this, goes like this, goes like this, goes, then it changes and it goes like this. So it goes like this, and then it goes like this. And then I'll put some here on the underside. And then I'm going to take a, pick up a little bit of gray. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of my light gray with a little bit of my coping gray. And I'm going to come in here and on this side of the shadow of the shell, I'm going to pull a little bit more. I don't want to turn my shell totally gray. And I'm going to enhance this on the next fire. But this is my start of creating that shape. And I remember I said to you, you don't need to come out here and do everything out here. Just kind of work this part. And you're going to work that till you get it nice and smooth. But still, you're going to have color towards the edge. And then you can take a sponge. And you can take out some light in the center of it. So in the scent, this area here, remember I said, would be lighter. And then maybe I would have added a little bit more color, but then you can come through here with your wipeout tool and you can add some small striations in there. And I'll show you my piece here so I can really show it probably on this one quite well. This is a first fire. So I have put the cream in, I have pulled the color, I have pulled out some of those, I've taken out the light and then I've pulled those striations. So it's gonna be lightest in here, darkest towards the edge. I have another one here. 
that started but not finished. So you can see it's, I haven't put the, uh, in this I've got the ivory and the, and the gray on here. Here's my lightest and here's my darker. And then the head is in. There's my first fire beginning on my, uh, my um, sand dollar. And then we'll move to this, which is going to be this, the anemone, the sea anemone. So back to here, I'm going to add just a little bit more gray so you can see it a bit better, just towards the edges. And then I'm going to put a little bit of darker color around on the stripes and a little bit in the head, and then we'll move on. And then there'll be a bit more color in here. And sometimes I add a little bit of mauve or purple in here, so I'm just not in the grays. And then I soften, so I clean my brush. And sometimes I can even use my brush to pull out some of those highlights. And the softer you pull them out, the prettier they are. And you want this to be irregular. Don't make this just a row like this, irregular. This will have shadow here. There will generally be some sort of highlight on here. All right, can you see that? All right. Continuing on then over here, remember we've now put the light in and I haven't done it all perfectly yet. And I've come and I've made these lines with my brushes as long as my brush stays together. Lay the color in and try to make those striations, those little, so it's going to be irregular. Pick up your yellow-brown number two, which is or pecan, and then come out and start to do the shadow side. Same thing, lay it in, make those little lines. Now, obviously, there would be some more in here. So what you're doing is you're creating now this shadow that's on this side. You're continuing this shadow with this color. And on the second fire, we'll add some more yellow brown number two and some rich brown or even some purple. And I don't care that there's gaps here. But what I do care about is that when you're finished this, that this is nice and perfect. So take your wipeout tool. You can't have this bumpy. It's not a, it is not a bumpy shell, right? You look at that, it's a smooth, smooth surface. So no bumpy shell. So you wanna come with your wipeout tool and make sure the last thing that you do that this is nice and perfect. Doesn't matter that it vanishes a little bit because we're gonna shadow that. In the eye, we um, we can put blues and, and black and violets. So first we'll do the, I usually use some blue in here. I only have my medium value of blue here, but that's what I'll use for now. I'll just put some blue in here and I don't generally like to just use black to start. I like to, I like to always have some blue Some blue, I'm gonna now pick up some black. If I didn't, I don't have any NASA blue, but I like NASA blue, which is like a navy blue or a dark, um, dark blue. And remember, it's going to be, I want to dark around here and I want to dark on that edge because there's going to be more shadow on that edge. So I'm going to turn my plate 
and I'm going to pull this like this. And I can pick up, I'm going to pick up a little bit of mauve or a little bit, I don't have any violet on my, a dark violet would be good. And put on here. I just pulled out a limited palette for today. It's like the head, it's going to be very intense when we're done, but I don't want it to be totally black to start. You have to be careful that your black doesn't chip. So if you put the blue in it or you put the purple in it or you put some uh, ruby in it, that helps not only change the color and make it richer, but it also prevents it from chipping and it's less likely to chip. Now you'll have another kick at the can next time to do that to darken this. So try to try to get the dark towards the edge and then you're going to take out a few highlights because we don't want it to be just a solid mess. So I can use my brush to take out a highlight and that makes a soft highlight. I can use my wipeout tool to take out a highlight. That's going to make it a more intense highlight. I can soften that intense highlight by coming in here afterwards with my brush and just kind of softening the edges a bit if I wish. So I have choices that I can make depending on what I want my the head of my shell to look like. How's that look so far? Okay, clear enough. Is it clear for you? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. All right, so um, if I had like a sapphire blue or a medium blue where I'm gonna take a little bit of purple, I can put that in here. I can sometimes also use green, blue green. So I'm gonna take some of this bluey green color and put in here close to the eye. And then I usually leave this area open for mother of pearl. So right in the center here where you want it, mother of pearl. You can also um, put mother of pearl in here if you wish. So if you're going to put mother of pearl, which is a luster on, you need to not paint it because when you put the paint on and you fire it, and then you come back and you put the mother of pearl on, it's going to look um, frosty. It sometimes it looks pretty, but if you want that shiny opalescent color, you want to put that mother of pearl on an area that doesn't have previous paint on it. So even if you have to take your finger and come in here and clean out a section so it's really clean, do that and then come back, make sure it's super clean so that you'll be ready for that. Mother Pearl, which I usually put on the last or the second last fire. And I usually just fire my lusters to like 17, 18. All right. That help? Yes. So other things to think about when you're doing these shells is they have little hairs. So you can really see you, this one. I don't, yeah, you can see it on this shell. Can you see the little hairs? Just see if I can get it focused. Here. Texture, yeah. It's hard because you're getting that glare. Can you can see it there? The little hairs. Those are really important. I usually put those on. I use a, a little bit of yellow red with a little bit of yellow brown. Um, and I use a detail brush to put those in. And you don't have to put them on the first time, but you can. And then I sometimes take my wipeout tool and I'll come in and I'll also pull some out that are white. So you can see on this, this is a finished one. You can see there's going to be shadow in here. There's the little hairs. You can see it's darker on here and you can see that there's shadow on here. And we're going to do that now on the, the second fire piece. You can see the highlights here. Let me uh, take you to this one. 
and uh, we'll just put a bit of color on the sea in it. So these are fun to do. They can be a whole variety of colors. They can be green, they can be purple, they can be pink. So they don't just, you, you don't just have to do the pink ones. If I uh, go to here and I just share this with you. You can see all the different colors. You can also see here's the structure of them. So this is a very interesting one to do too. This is the Sputnik sea urchin. But this shows you the structure of them. So if you're trying to understand like what, what is that I'm painting? And you can see the irregular edge is much prettier than if it's just a round circle like this. So you want that irregular edge. You can see that these dots are bigger here because it's pushing out and then they get smaller up here and they diminish as you go down. But this section here will have the bigger dots. So we're when we do that on the second fire, we'll show you that. But this gives you a really good idea of the different colors that you can, that you can see. All right, so we're back. So for this one, for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to use soft rose. And I, I try to look at my colors and I think or maybe every second one is going to be light. And I just paint in my colors. And again, I try to paint the way the, um, the shape of the, the shell. So if you do that, it's a lot easier than having to... Uh, smooth it later like if you if you try to kind of nurture it along the way it is that, that works really good and I'm going to put it here and it's nice to add a little bit of violet or a little bit of blue sometimes so think of where the shadows are um, anything you can do so it doesn't just look like two shades of pink right you're the artist you're in charge you can you can do that. All right, so that's um, the pink. I'm going to now step to a bit of ruby. I don't want it super dark, but I want it darker. If I could use American Beauty. I want, when I put the dots in, I'd like to be able to see where I put them. So that I want it dark enough for that. So I'm just going to continue alternating my colors. And trying to get them on smoothly. If you're painting with the gold colors, you need to use maybe a little bit more oil because they have a tendency to drag a bit. So sometimes on your brush, you just want a little bit more. I, I'm. You can see I've left a gap here. I'm going to put a little bit of mauvey blue in there. That's just my choice. I, do, I don't want to, maybe this one I'll just do part of and I'll put some mauvey blue in there. All right, so you kind of get the idea. In the center little pole here, that's a dark hole, but I don't want it to be like dark like the end of the, end of the earth. So I'm going to put a little bit of soft rose with a little bit of ruby. I'm going to intentionally make it irregular and I'm not going to make it solid. I can always darken it next time. Then I'm going to clean my brush. And the ring that's right next to that dark circle, I'm just going to make with soft rose, this little ring here. All right. Now I'm going to come with a a bit of mauve with a little bit of blue, which makes a nice violet. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that in here just to give a little variety and to help with shadowing. 
And remember that this is going to be behind the oyster shell, so we can afford to have a little bit of mauvey gray shadow color under here. But I can also do that on the second fire. If I just get this looking good like this, I'll be happy. And then I take my wipeout tool, and I had a student who told me, she said, you're the only teacher that I know that paints more with a wipeout tool than with a brush. So take your wipeout tool, and you're going to come in. You're going to look at your, your resource material, and you're going to start putting pushing out your holes. And in these holes, next fire, we're going to put base for raised gold, which is enamel. So I'm going to uh, push. And I want to be pretty much up on my brush, on my wipeout tool. And each time I do it, I want to clean my wipeout tool on my cloth. So I want you'll see it more on the ruby part. So I'm just making holes. They don't have to be perfect. But I want them. This is going to guide me where I'm going to put my base. And notice that I'm doing the big row first. And then I'm going to come up here, next one. So I kind of have to push with my wipeout tool a little bit to get the paint to come off. And then they get smaller. And then there's nothing in this ring. Then they get smaller. So this one and this one are pretty good size. Then they get smaller. Can you see it? Am I going too fast? No? OK. So the other thing to think about with this then, after you've painted the leaves, you'll want to come back with your wipeout tool and you want to put this sea urchin on top of the leaves. So you want to make sure that you have at least part of a dot coming over where the leaves are. Can you see that? So every, you, there, there would be dots sticking out from this. They wouldn't be huge but they'd be half dots. Like if you were looking at the surface, it wouldn't be smooth. So you want to get some of those. The same with at the bottom of the sea urchin. You want to push some out. So that's important as well. So you want to set the sea urchin on top of the leaves, but behind the oyster shell. Okay. And we're already at 10.55, so can you stand it for a few, a little bit longer? I haven't got to the second fire yet. So the oyster is shell is pretty easy to do. I, I again, start with my ivory color. It's a good base. So cream, ivory, magnolia. I like a little bit of color, so I do like cream. I'm going to put it in here in the center of my, the big part of my oyster shell and a little bit over here. I'm going to have a big, a dark circle or here, a dark half moon shape. That's where the oyster attaches. So I'm going to um, come in there and pick up a little bit of blue with black. Load my brush, and I'm just going to come in here and create that kind of half moon sort of space. And I like to get it so it kind of goes around and I see some texture in it. I don't want it to be just a, a blob of dark. And I like to use more than one color so that it's going to be pretty. I can take my... Um, pointer brush, my detail brush, put it in my portrait dark brown or my rich brown. And I can, I'm just with my portrait dark brown, I'm just coming, whoops, with a little bit on my tip of my brush, creating the outside edge. So look at your resource material. You can vary your colors. You can use hair brown, rich brown. Don't have to use the same everywhere. So right now all I'm doing is finding, following my tracing and following the outline. And I'm not trying to make it all the same. So one of the things about this brush, if I'm up on the tip of my brush, 
I can make a really thin line. If I push it down, I can make a heavier line. I could use a little bit of black with my portrait dark brown. I don't want to make my oyster shell black, but I it does have some dark characteristics. I'm going to come down here, make a bit here. Maybe I'll lay in a bit of tan. I like tan as a color. Um, I could use a bit of Baker's Brown, but I'm going to use this tan color. I'm going to load a little bit of it in here, maybe in here, just so I have some variation. This here helps me to, to uh, show off my shell, the inside part of the shell, and not just make it all the same color. But notice I'm not doing, I'm not going around and doing everything. This, there's nothing here. There's something here. I think I'll add just a little bit more hair brown to the base of this, a little bit different color. I'm just laying it in in a kind of an unstructured way. I'm going to pick up a bit of gray. I want the I want the oyster shell to dip in. I want it to dip in, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of my gray colors, and I'm maybe just going to pull in a little bit. Maybe it needs to pull in. You can kind of look and think, okay, it's got to go in. I just got to go in. I'm putting a little bit of blue with my gray so it's not just all the same. If I want to, if I want a pearl, I'm probably going to stick the pearl right in here. So I need a bit of color right next to that. So sometimes a bit of blue with a little bit of green blue is kind of nice. I can come in here. Use your re reference material to look at it. Something so it's not boring. And occasionally pink looks really good. Come in, so pink could be cast off of this sea urchin into this shell here. Now you think, okay, well, Alan, it really looks a mess. But now I need to make it look like it's dipped. So I'm going to take my finger, but you could use a brush, and I'm going to pull in. I'm going to take my brush, if I can find it here, clean it, oil it, dry it so it's not soppy. It's flat. And I'm now going to just soften a little bit of that. Can you see it dipping? I can do the same thing here. And then I can just, my students tell me that they don't have the same finger as I do. All right. So then if I wanted a, an oil, a, a pearl, I would probably stick it right in here. Wipe it out. And next time be ready to paint it. But I would totally wipe it out. And I would then darken this space right here. On the, that side of my pearl. But my pearl would be wiped out. And I don't have time right now to do that. But you know, it would be round and I'd make it nice. And then next time around, I'd have a little bit of a... Um, shadow on it and I make sure I had a highlight at the bottom. All right, the last one that I, I need to touch on just before we move on, and it's 11 o'clock, is, is the is starfish. So remember I said there's a star there. So the good thing about them, they're textured. So you don't, you can do a lot with the texturing. So start with a light color. So again, you could start with your cream, you could start with your tan. Kind of lay it in as a base. You're kind of working wet on wet. I'm going to add tan so you can see it better. Maybe. Trying to get it so you can see it better. All right. And 
if you're going to put a little bit of shadow, like here's portrait dark brown, where the shadow goes is under the stars on the side that are facing the little feet. So you're going to, into that little star indent, you're going to put your little shadow. And that's going to help to show the star. Can you see that? It sort of shows the star up. Then I'm going to come with my yellow browns and I'm going to start putting them in and the shadow, there'll be more shadow here, but I'm just going to lay it in. I could use both kinds. I want lightest I want the lighter part to be a little bit at the top, at the, the top of the leg. Don't You don't have to cover all your cream up. So this looks pretty easy, right? Kind of lay it in like that. You'll want to make sure that when we, when we take out the oyster shell here, which we haven't done yet, that you have a nice crisp bottom. And that you what, use your wipeout tool and you come through and you make sure that the oyster shell is on top. So you can come in here and you can make any kind of wipeouts that you want to create the texture on your oyster shell. Can you see that? All right. So that's a really important. And then the same thing, you're going to come and you, you can use your wipeout tool. You can use your small wipeout tool as well as your big one. And you come and take out uh, some of the edges all the way around the edge of your oyster shell. You want light on top of the earth, the sea urchin. And you probably want more in places, more than one wipeout. Not, so capture the edge, but then you can come down and you can take a few little extras out. Think about what it would look like. Look at your resources. Don't do the same thing everywhere. All right, so I'm coming over here. And if I was doing this, I wouldn't take these out until I've painted my leaves. All right, once I get my color, so I've got that, this oyster shell now is on top of the starfish. Now I just need to finish the starfish. I'm going to put a little bit of color, like a little bit of um, cream in the center. I'm going to look to see if I have enough shadow to hold my star in the center here. This is actually the stomach of the, underneath here is the pylorus or the stomach of the starfish. And then I'm going to add some shadow. So again, I'm thinking about where my light is. If my light is coming through here, then I want to have some shadow. That's going to help get this starfish some dimension. So I'm going to put some shadow in here. And again, I could just use yellow brown with a little bit of portrait dark brown on the side there. Now the, the sun is hitting here, so the, the shadow will be in the crease between the feet, between those little spindles that are coming off. And then there'll be some here. Don't Make it all perfectly, perfectly the same. Okay, so it's there. It should be here. And there'll be some here. And you need to have that shadow. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your wipeout tool with the rounded edge. And you're going to, far, remember I said the points of the star, which is right here, right there, right there, right here. That's where, that's the center of the, mostly the center of the limb of the starfish. So now I'm going to push up a little bump down the center of that leg. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. And then I'm going to come and I'm going to get some on the edges, the outside edges, and some into some of this shadow. So again, like the sea urchin, where we had the bumps on the side here, this starfish, can you see those? 
will have those and they get smaller and they go away towards the end. But that really helps to show the texture of the of that tentacle. And then this one is the main down the, the little limb. And then here is the outside edge again. Sometimes I even go up here to the star and I'll use my small wipeout tool and I'll pick out a few little ones along the edge of the star so that when it's fired, I can see the star. And then this is going to have texture on it. It's going to have um, base for raised gold on it. Uh, it's going to have more shadow on it as we move on. Is that a pretty fast rendition of how to do the majority of those? Of those? All right, let me... I start then with the second fire because that, so that's kind of the first fire before I did all the wiping out, I'd make sure I did the, the uh, leaves, the seaweed and look at the seaweed. It's not the same color. You know, it, I didn't just take chartreuse or I didn't just take moss green, you know, they're darker as they go behind. They're prettier. If you use both cool colors and warm colors. I want the idea that they're moving. On top of this uh, shell, I want to make sure I have nice wipe out. So I've wiped it out so it's sitting on top. So this will be lighter. If it's behind, it's going to be darker. Um, so you need to think about that as you select both the color and you think about it. And these are just ideas about what the what the seaweed might look like. You can do whatever you want. Uh, just remember that where do you want your viewer to look? You know, I could put a bunch of coral in here. I could do a whole bunch of stuff. But then where am I going to look? So that's always an important consideration when you're doing your work. Technically, this is supposed to be grabbing your grabbing your eye. When I look at this, because the Nautilus shell is the biggest, it should be grabbing my eye. This is another clump, and I go through my the design from left to right, and I kind of stop here, and it holds my attention. So that's my plan. So this is a just what we just did. This is a, a first fire to a certain point of another one. So you can kind of see first fire. I'm, um, I try to get the more watercolor like. I'm not into really intense, but lots of people paint beautiful shells that are really intense and really lifelike. So you have to figure out what you're trying to do. I like that idea of sort of being in the ocean is kind of misty. Uh, I, I don't, I want to see the whole, I don't really, I'm not really looking at each individual meticulous shell. All right. We'll leave this one and go to this one. So now we fired it. And we're here. So you can see we don't you this is lost edges here, right? We don't see anything there. We've we've established our our sand dollar, but we now need to make it darker. We've you can see our pearl in here. But we need to we need to put this behind. We need to shadow some more and so forth. I am going to spend a bit of time. Um showing you kind of the refinement pieces and how to get there because I don't want to I'm afraid that if you have a video that lasts and lasts and lasts you'll just I'll lose your attention so the first thing I'm going to show you is the Nautilus and some of this some of the refinements so I probably would fire this twice more once more to get darker color and then the next one to do my shadows. But I don't have the time to show you that now. So I'm going to show you how to do the shadows. So if this was more intense behind here, you would see more of it when I uh, when I did that, when I would do this. But we're going to just go like this today. So I'm going to just pick up some mauve color. 
and maybe a little portrait dark brown. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to start shadowing. I might use a bit of blue. The side, this, I'm going right over. And you can see by doing this, now I start to see the form of the Nautilus shell. So I'm using a shaded load and I'm pulling towards myself. I'm going to do it a little darker so you can see it a little better. I think you can see it there, but I'm going to do it a little darker than what I would normally do so that you can see it. And down here, obviously, we'd have quite a bit of, this will be black in here, but quite a bit of shadow because this is behind. Okay, I'm going to just continue up here. So shaded load not going all the way in. Remember, I'm trying to retain my light. I'm going right over the brown. It's going to gray the brown, but it's a shadow, right? So I want it, I want the, the content of the shells to be grayed. Doesn't that make a big difference? Huge difference, right? And I would continue, so you can see how much dark I got on the first fire here and how much light I retained. So I, I could continue, I could move to a bit more gray with my, with my shadow color and continue to darken. And I just keep turning my piece. And I don't want to end up with a line. Like I, I see how irregular this is. I want, I want that irregular nature. Don't just come up here and do a line. Like when you're doing um, leaves in a, in a picture, sometimes you get a black green line. And then I'm looking, this is my looking phase. Okay, I got a bit of mauve on here. I need shadow behind here because it's behind. I'm going to need some shadow in here. So it depends on where my light is, but I need to have some shadow. There would be little shadow cast under here, but don't fill in everything. This isn't a solid piece. I would darken in here so you can see that this is there's some blues and some purples in here. I'd now come over this again. I'd probably add some more blue or blue green into here and keep my center for my mother of pearl. Does that improve it? Makes a difference, doesn't it? And remember, if I've shadowed this, I'm not going to take out very many highlights. If I, you know, I might take out one down here, but I'm, I want those to be, they were there from the first fire. I want them to be diminished. Then I would look to see whether I need to brighten anything else. Remember, I said that these are little these are, these are striations. So you can come in here. You can use a little bit more rich brown. Come in there and really darken. Pick up your rich brown. So look at where it needs it, and try to make your brush do the work. I probably before, this is what I would have done before I put the purple on. I would have darkened all of these. And that would make a huge difference in how round my piece would be. And then I would do the shadowing, right? So take the time to get your details right and then do another fire to put that sh the shadowing on. And then I would use my detail brush. With a bit of yellow red or in this case I'm just using a bit of yellow brown with a little soft rose to make these fine hairs and try not to make them all perfect to add to your piece and then that should be done so when I go down here I would darken in here I would come and I would make these hairs if these hairs are not very evident I'd come in here and and make them as evident as I want them, but not perfect. All right. I'd come in here and I'd 
add a little bit of color to some of these, but not all of them. I don't want them to all look perfectly like a black hole. Um, I also look, the light's coming from here. So it's coming down this way. I'm also, if you look, there's usually like a little shadow. on one side of these holes. So that's another way that you can embellish them. You can, don't do as big as I did, but you can come in there and you can create a little cast shadow. This is too big. So that adds another little dimension. And again, use your resources to the piece. And then you can, paint a little bit more. So this is where one of those turnips are. So I could come in here and put a little bit more shadow on that side, a little bit more shadow on this side. And pull out that. Do a bit here. Do a bit here. So what I'm trying to do is get this so it doesn't it doesn't look just like a flat sand dollar. And I usually wipe out the top, make sure it's clean. And these these um shadows go in in a triangular way, so they should be triangular. And then I can take my wipeout tool or my detail brush and I can come in here and I can if I think that I've got my edge the way I want it, I'm gonna just add a little bit more color to the edge here. Maybe I want it to look a little sandier looking. Then I'm gonna take my detail brush and I can come in here and I can actually speckle it. And I don't want to use the same colors all the time. And I don't want them to just appear like they're everywhere exactly the same. But that texture will really make a difference, doesn't it? Can you see that? The little, so they're, they're just little dots and a few of them come up here. And that will finish off your, your sand dollar. So you can be as particular as you want. So if I was a second fire, I would come in here on the sea urchin and I would darken again. And I would probably darken before I would do my base for raised gold. But I'm going to show you a little bit about darkening and then I'll show you the base. So it looks pretty good, but I could, I could push this behind a bit. And if you look, you can see there's some blue, there's the different shades of pink. Here's that center that's not totally a dark center. Well, I could darken that a little bit more, but not fill the whole thing in. I could come down here and I could shadow in here. And so if it's shadow, I want it to be pretty consistent. I could use a gray. I could use a bit of ruby with gray. I could use a little bit of blue because blue is pretty and it pushes things back. And up here where I had that nice little light collar, I could even have a little bit more shadow. All right, if you do this, which I highly recommend, then you would do your base on the next fiber, but we don't have that time, so I'll show you how to do the base in just a minute. All right, when I go down here, I'm gonna be darkening in here. I wanna keep the light. But like maybe I think, oh, well, this looks pretty good, but I think it could use a bit more color. I can't really see that pearl. The first thing I'm going to do is darken that attachment spot right here a bit, but I'm not making it solid. And kind of, if you look, they're kind of textured. I might find that I need to do some darkening in here. 
Maybe I need a bit of darkening over here, right? So maybe I need a swoosh of a different color. Pink is always nice. Um, buff is a nice color. It's a nice color for animals, but maybe I need a little swoosh of that. Maybe I need a bit of light yellow. I don't have any light yellow on my thing, but I'm going to try some yellow brown here. So you can decide what does that oyster need, and then again try to keep try to keep it looking like the shell is pulling inward. It's not there's going to be depth. Now to find my pearl, I'm going to put a little bit of a gray edge around it, and I'm going to get this darker, and my pearl will pop out. I'm going to definitely come down here and do more shadow. and maybe just pull out a highlight or two. And I'm going to find excuses to do dark up here, even a little bit of black with my detail brush. Like in here, I might want to darken that. Some places I may even come in here and make some little striations inside my shell. So they're not... It's just not that I wiped it out. I actually painted a few things in that were significant. But the little bit of dark, the black makes a difference. Don't just do what I did there, which is just an end. Carry it somewhere else. And then if you need to, come through with your wipeout tool to make some texture in it if you think it's too. All right. And then this one here, the same thing we did before, we're going to find the star, which is right here. And we've kind of lost the star. In this piece here, we've kind of lost the star. So I'm gonna pick up some yellow brown, number one, with a little yellow number two, and I'm just gonna come in here. I'm gonna lighten this guy a bit. And all of a sudden, he'll start to come to life. I'm doing a little wash over all of those little holes I made with my wipeout tool. Now remember this would be shadowed under, so I'd want a bit of portrait dark brown or a little bit of blue. Could even have a little green on it from the leaf, but it's need, this, this needs to go under and then I need to make sure that I wipe out my oyster shell on top. It's gotta be on top. So now I can sort of see my star a little bit better. If I still think, oh, it's still a bit wimpy, I can come in here and try not to outline it perfectly, but I can add just a little bit more. I can decide whether it needs any more shadow anywhere. On the outside edge, in between the limbs, and now I'm if I do that on this fire, then on the next fire, I would add base. But we're going to add base now, even though I, I wouldn't want you to do that normally. Any questions there? All right. So I'm going to um, I'm going to mix up some base and. I appreciate your attention that you're hanging in there. This would be a good time for questions while I mix up base if you have something. So I'm, I'm going to mix up base. I'm going to mix up a uh, base for raised gold. And I'm going to use heavy balsam of Capable. And I want it to be pretty thick. I, I and I find that if I mix it and I go at it right away, a lot of times it's too loose. So I mix it with a little bit of this and I put a little bit of this on my dish separate from my base. And then I just gradually work a little bit of the balsam, heavy balsam into the base. And then usually I have to add a bit more powder, even if I'm careful because I want the, this, the little uh, balls to stand up. I don't want them to be flat. The reason I would not put the balls in right now at this stage is I've got wet paint with oil on there. And I find that what happens with the balsam and with the uh, base is when I've mixed it and I put it on there, it sometimes spreads more than I want it. I don't have the same control. So I would suggest that you do what I just did, 
fire it, get your leaves the way you want it, and then come back on the on the next one and uh, do your base. All right. Now, the other thing is, is that you can do backgrounds on these. And I'm going to talk a little bit about backgrounds in a minute. Um, you could resist these. So like you could fire at a second fire and you could resist it. I do not red resist it. So, so this is red resist. It's water-based, it's plastic. You kind of put it on, take a picture of what you've done so you, you can make sure you pull it all off. And the red resist protects your piece so that when we go and do the background and we sprinkle it with texture, that you don't have to clean everything off. But I don't mind a few little sprinkles on my work. So I don't do it, but you might find that you want to red resist all or part of the work before we do the background. Um, the other thing I didn't mention just before I go on is that um, pen oil, you can use pen oil, pen ink, and you can do a little detail work on your sand dollar if you want. Um, you can do a bit of, of outline and a little bit of those little hairs with a fine pen. I love this pen oil. It's, it's terrific. Uh, I don't, I'm not selling it, but I, I, it's terrific. It dries, but it doesn't dry super fast. It, um, you can paint with it if you need to, if you want to get something really dark. So that's something I like. All right. So I'm going to mix the base and I'll move this here. So make sure everything is clean because you want it to be white. You don't want to have a dirty palette knife or anything. So the base is a white enamel. Base for raised gold. I usually fire to 17. You can fire to 18. You can fire it more than once. This is my heavy balsam. I don't use a dropper. I'm a lazy person. So I just use the end of a end of a paintbrush and I just put some down over here away from the base. And I'll just keep that there in case I need more. Whoops. And it's sticky and it dries. Um, but it doesn't dry in a hurry. But it dries enough that your um, little balls will stand up. I don't want them to fall down. So I may have to add more powder to this, but first of all, I'm going to grind it really good. And I can tell right now it's going to fall off my, my palette knife. So that's too runny. So that's fine. I'm going to be using... Uh, a stylus like this to apply. And just add a little bit more. So I always find that even when I'm careful, I still have to add a bit more because it's like it loosens up initially when you first when you first made it, it kind of loosens up a bit. I probably even need to use more, but I can take my stylus here, and I know this is white on white, which is going to be hard to see. It makes a dot. It doesn't make a super dot. I'm going to add just a little bit more. I want it to be just a little bit on the stiff side. And if you're doing this work, you can probably save this over for a day or so if you cover it over, if you didn't get, you got interrupted or whatever. So again, I would not apply this over wet paint. I would, I have done that. Sometimes it's pretty. It, if I want it to run a little bit, like on the starfish, it'll pick up a bit of the color, but generally it'll spread more than I want it. Okay, so I can tell that that looks better. So I test it on my tile. So I'm picking it up on the ball and I'm going down. I'm trying not to touch the, the china and it looks pretty good. It's got pretty good height. Let me 
see if I can show that any better. Can you see these little dots right there? All right, so they got pretty good height. You can see that, see, this is pretty, it's not falling off my palette knife. It's pretty thick. And that's what I want. All right. So if I was doing a lot of this work, sometimes I keep a little bit of the heavy balsam um, on my tile. So if I need to add a tad more in, I can. But remember, every time I add the heavy balsam in, I may have to add more base for raised gold. Right. So it's just an enamel. And it's pretty forgiving now. So I'm going to go back and find my piece here. Yeah. Right. So um, I'm going to start with the sea anemone. And remember, I said that in the center, they're bigger. So I'm picking it up. So there's a ball on the end of my on the end of, end of my stylus. And I'm going to I'm just going to start here in the middle. And I have the most on my my stylus, the first hit. Then it's going to get smaller. So I could go to a spot where it's going to get smaller. Um, Barbara Jensen is a wonderful China painter who did lots of raised paste. And she'd say one dib, one dot, right? So you go into your stuff, one dot. And that's true. If you want to do, if you want the same dot all the time, it's into your base, onto your China back load again but in this case i want big and small so i can get away with maybe i can maybe i can even get three so i'm now picking up again end of my stylus and i'm not doing a huge scoop i'm coming across i'm trying to do my biggest ones here and you can see i don't have hardly enough to go even a second time this time okay let's see this one all right i'm going to do one here one here i'm trying to follow where i was where i put my my dots from the day before previous that i wiped them out okay i'm coming down here one two and i'm getting smaller now i load it again so i've got more stuff on my stylus so i'm going to go over here where i do a big one whoops and if it falls over like makes a candy kiss you can clean it up by scooping with the end of your wipeout tool but you have to make sure you don't have any ghosts left you have to take a little toothpick with a little cotton and make sure there's no ghosts because it will leave a shadow if or a residue all right so i'm coming back down again to smaller smaller out of goodies and if i have to do small ones i just pick up less material and remember what I said about I want to make sure that I have some sticking out here at the bottom. So I'm going to just finish by coming here, here, here. Got to get some more. Notice I'm still steadying my hand. I'm straight up and down. Still not enough. And if your pile get spread out you have to stop and scoop it together with your with your palette knife you don't need a lot of, of material but if it's all spread over the place you won't be able to get like i'm going into the into the scoop like this so i i want to make sure that i have a little pile to scoop into now see i'm pulling it's it's stringing so i'm doing this to pull it off so i can get those nice round dots and coming up up ran out up up so you have to be patient a little bit like a singer sewing machine so you can see it's better if your piece is fired to do this anyway because then you can wipe it out if you screw it up can you see that? That looks nice, doesn't it? So as you go out here and you go towards the back, I won't do them all. You want to 
they they're smaller they're in the they're in the distance they're not super small but they're a little smaller than the ones in the front and then we want to make sure we got one on the outside edge so there's a little candy kiss there so i'm just going to push it clean my wipeout tool do it again and i'm probably okay all right let me do just one more set here okay so here all right does it look look nice and dimensional so it really is effective, right? So you do this, you get down here, you've got them sticking out here on this leaf. They're going to be on top of this leaf. This leaf will have been painted. They're like halves because you can, you're can. you not going to see the whole thing. But you want to see a half. Try not to, if you can help it, to touch the porcelain. You want the enamel to touch the porcelain and then the, to come off. So you can see how that makes a nice shape. I'm going to move now to the starfish. So you can do some of the same thing on the starfish. So again, I'm going to make sure it's got good intensity. Remember, I made those, those little dots down the feet. So the same thing goes. I'm going to find where I did that. I don't have to fill them all in. They don't all have to be perfectly the same size. Remember, the starfish is kind of contorted, so you wouldn't necessarily be all perfectly the same size. Um, I didn't show you this, but I'll do it up here. You can see the dots that you did, you, you took out on the previous fire. You can come in on that second fire before you do this, and you can actually, so if the shadow's on this side, you can take your detailer, and you can actually, there's black on here, but you wouldn't necessarily use black, you use portrait dark brown and don't do it everywhere, but you can come and put a shadows on some of these little dots and they show a little bit more. Can you see that? So, so that helps too. You don't, so think about where your light source is. It just adds a bit more interest. All right, so lots to lots to think about. So this is like the finishing touches pieces, okay? And then you're going to continue doing the same thing down here. They're going to be bigger towards the starfish, the, the star. And then they're going to get smaller and diminish as they go down the limb. Whoops, and there's a little candy kiss that you don't want. Notice that I'm cleaning my tool all the time so I'm not getting a residue. And the reason that it's stringing so nicely is because it's nice and thick, right? So I want it thick. So it, I just have to go a little slower and twist my tool as I come up to prevent it from stringing and going its way. Sometimes I put very small ones, not everywhere, but along some of the, of the star. And if you look at a starfish, sometimes they've got like, it looks like almost like little hairs. It's almost like they've got texture that goes around them almost like a tree a trunk ring. Okay, so I kind of like that. So if you want some of those, you can either mess up. Let me do one over here. Do one here. And I'm going to do some over here because I have paint over here. And remember, I said sometimes it's effective with paint. Now, if you do a big blob like that, take your wipeout tool, clean it off. Take a Q-tip or a little piece of, of uh, paper towel with alcohol on it and clean it. Make sure it's clean. Let's try again. And part of what's happening is that it's just been sitting out, so it's drying a little bit. So I may have to stop and add just a little bit more um, balsam to it. I'm going to 
straighten up my pile. Yeah, I'm going to do a couple over here. So I can see that it's really stiffening up. And they don't all have to be on the spots that I made. Now I'm going to I'm going to um, clean my stylus off and I'm just going to pull my stylus through some of these and kind of stretch them a little bit. But I don't want to totally eliminate the dot, but I'm just kind of stretching a few of them. And that makes a nice texture as well. What do you think? Think that's a good thing? Any questions? Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Any questions at this point? No. All right. So now we're going to move just to the last phase, which is how to do the background, right? So it depends on your piece. So it, it so I'm going to move this out of the way. So it depends on your piece. And so ideally, you know, you should have a plan and paint your plan. You should paint what you see, but you should have a plan. So when you think when you actually went back at the very first beginning, you would have had an idea about well, I want this to be a, a ocean scene. I want to see some wave action. I want some sand. I want some beach. And I've sort of thought about that as I've positioned my shells on my piece so there's no surprises and so that my perspective and everything will be all right when I get to that phase. So this is a challenging piece because this is kind of up. And so it needs to be sitting on something or it's going to be floating in air. Um, this one is more linear. So I can see where I can put the sand in here. It doesn't have to be a whole brown beach. I can just have bits of sand, like little sandbars, and I can have the water, and then I could have the sky. And that's how I did this one. So um, everything would be fired. I'm coming now to do my background. I'm going to use alcohol to create texture and some freedom, you need to make sure your paint is fresh. If we're doing this, if your paint is not fresh, it's not going to work for you. So I use alcohol, I this is rubbing alcohol. Um, I buy it, I think I bought my last one at Walmart. It was 99% rubbing alcohol, it came in a huge gallon container and I've just now used it all up. So I'm gonna go and buy some more like that. Uh, you can also use, you can go to the, liquor store this is always exciting for the liquor guys and you can buy Everclear so this is uh, Paula White uses this when she does ripples on the water so this is also like it's grain alcohol it's pretty pure um, so you can also use this this is a lot cheaper so this is in this happens to be in a Benadryl spray bottle you know you get Benadryl anti-itch cream this is a spray. This is what this is. But any spray bottle, this fine spray bottle will work for you. And then uh, the other thing we're going to use is a toothbrush. So this is a, so it's keep, keep your toothbrushes. They do deteriorate over time. They kind of melts the little bristles, but they're good for texture. So we're going, that's what we're going to use at this phase. And um, so your choices are, that you could do the red resist piece. You could say, okay, I really like my piece. I don't want any speckles all over it. I want to put my sand in my background in. I can red resist this. This is water-based. You use water, uh, water. You pour a little bit of this out on a tile. You apply it and cover the areas that you don't want your spackle and your spray to get on. I don't do that. You could do it. I might do it with something like this because I have these leaves in here. I did not do it on this piece. This is a finished piece. I did not do it on this piece. Because I don't mind the speckles landing on it. And I could come in and I could take my 
tissue and I could clean off what I didn't want. So I didn't do it. So this is the, this is where we're going, sort of just to kind of get a mood sandbar. Can you see these textured spots here? That's from the alcohol. This is the sky. This is again from the alcohol. Uh, this is from using a little brush and trying to create some wave action. So it's like a pretty free thing. And then can you see the little spots, the darker spots in here? Those are from your toothbrush. So over here, you can see some. That's the sand granules, which I applied with the toothbrush. So that's where we're going next. Do you want to hang in there with me to do that? You do. Okay. So you're a true hanger honor there. That's good. All right. So I am going to take a little bit of paint just off my palette that I made this morning. And I don't know that it's fresh because I just took it from my regular paints. And the reason I'm going to do this, I'm going to show you, we want to test to see if it's going to work. So we don't want to go to all this trouble and find out it's not going to work. So here's my tile. I'm going to take a big brush. I don't know where my biggest brush went, but anyway, this brush will do. I'm going to put a little oil on it. I'm just going to pick up, I'm going to pick up the blue and I'm just going to lay some blue on here just in a random kind of fashion. And maybe I'll pick up some of this green, blue, green, green, blue. All right. And maybe I'll pick up some Baker's Brown just to see whether it'll work. So I'm using, I, I'm oiling my brush, not a ton of oil, but enough. Like I don't want it to be too dry. So that's first, that's your first thing is if you're going to do this technique, not too dry, but you don't, I'm, I'm actually got the oil in my brush, blotted it a little bit, going into my paint, mixing it well on my brush and coming in here and pulling it down. Now I'm going to just take a little extra paint over here. All right, now I want to see if this is really going to work. So I have two choices here. So the first choice, I got a little dish here. I'm just going to pour a little bit. I'm going to use the Everclear, but I could use the alcohol. Woo, little, but that's a lot. All right, and I'm just going to clean my brush. And I'm just going to see if this will, will this work for wave action. So I'm going to put my brush into the Everclear and I'm just going to come wave action. Well, it works there. Look at that. Now I'm just pulling this down. This is Paula White. I attribute this to Paula White. So you can see you don't want to blob it. So I probably should have dried my brush a little bit more. But my paint is working, right? My paint, this paint particularly is working. This not quite as good, right? Now let's see if I add a little bit more. And you don't want it, to, it will run more. So don't, don't, um, don't get too excited too fast about it. All right, so so that seems to work. My blue is is pretty subtle. I'll dry it one more time and just come in here again. And it could be that my, this is not fresh paint, but it works. So that gives me enough wave action that I want. Right now, let me see if I spray it. So I'm taking my rubbing alcohol. And I'm just going to, and I'm going to stay back a little bit. I don't want to. And I, I try, to try not to be too trigger happy, just one spray. And you can see the spots occurring. I'd rather do it less than more to start. Okay, now you can really see it up here in the, in the blue. And look what happened in the brown. So the brown I used more I had a lot more oil in my brush. So that would be more than I wanted. This is quite pretty up here, but at least I know my paint will work. So that's kind of my test. All right. So that's my test.
so I'm going to come in here now and I'm going to think beach. I'm going to start by putting some browns and I, I want it to be oily, but not runny oily. I want it, I want it to be oily enough. So I'm thinking about that. I would like a little bit of, and obviously I would be a lot more careful if I was doing this in real life to keep. If these were resisted, I wouldn't have to worry about it. I could just put this in here. So I'm just kind of laying in some sand. This is Baker's Brown. I'm adding a bit of tan. Here it's a little darker. Maybe I'll just add a little bit of portrait dark brown. Again, I want to make sure that I have enough oil in my brush. So I would just kind of get it in here. And if this was resisted, which I probably would do with this piece because of the leaves. And I could put pink in there. You see that pink from that sea anemone could cast color into here. So I could have a bit of rich brown with a bit of pink. I don't have to have it just all brown. I come in here and maybe I'm gonna come out here. And I'm gonna have a little bit here cause I want, I want it to look like that that shell is resting on something. And later on, I will put shadows underneath here. So on the next fire, I could kind of put my shadows in here on top of this, and it will look really pretty. Because you don't have any shadows in here, but if we had pretty shadows in here and on here and under here and under here and a little bit under here, it would just set them off. All right, I'm going to get a little bit more color here. So this might be too thick. It might be, I can feel it's a little thick. I'm adding a little bit more oil, but not oily, oily. And I'm going to put a little bit down here. And I'm just going to pull it across. So this is like my beach. And probably on this one, I would keep my edges white. But for now, I'm just going to go over that and I'll wipe that out later. All right, I want to have enough color. I don't want to have to do this again. Everybody can see it well enough. I could use a little gray. And remember, if I'm doing gray, I got to make sure that in the end that my starfish stays on top. So if if I've covered anything, if it's covered with resist, it doesn't matter. But if I haven't, I got to make sure that starfish sits on top. OK, I'm going to stop there for now. I'm going to put the blues in now. So I want this to be kind of the uh, water into the sky. Into It just kind of goes into the sky. I'm taking away this. Picking up my blues. I thought I had another blue. Hold on, will I get me one more blue? And I would definitely have Nasa blue or a black blue or something on my palette as well. So make sure your brush is clean, that you don't have any sand in it, sand color. Pick up your blues, start putting them in. So I'm, again, just kind of stroking them in.
I want it to look like the water is just kind of lapping through here. There is a bit of space in there, so you can afford to get a little bit. I'm going to take a bit of this blue green. Merge it in. Maybe I want to use some apple green even. Maybe this, maybe some of these leaves hold color into the water. I live on the water. I have beautiful green water sometimes. So I'm just trying to get a variety of colors that I would like that makes sense with my sandbar here. And I want them dark enough that I'm going to be able to see them. When I spray. Okay. So then just kind of look and see what you got, whether you like what you see, whether you think you need a little more color stroking through. This is tan. Don't leave any spaces here. You can always, if this is resisted, you're fine. If not, you can wipe it out. I want to streak this through some. Right, and this to me is too solid. Maybe I like that a bit better. All right, clean my brush. And to come up here, I'm just going to lay some blue in here. You could use, yeah, I could use some violet, some mauve. Remember that my shell here is mauve, so I don't want to do too much of that, but I could have a little bit. And I noticed, I, I kind of did mine in a diagonal way. Everything's going this way, so I want my, I want some movement going that way. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Remember, this would not be wet, so it wouldn't get in my way. You get the idea, lay it in. Consolidate it a little bit. Remember, I'm just working off a of first fire piece, so this would have a lot more intensity. You wouldn't have lost your subject matter. All right, I think I have enough. It's not going to be super bright, but I think it's going to be enough. All right, so if these were resisted, I wouldn't have to do anything. If I didn't resist them, I'd have to make sure that my color came right up to my leaves. So I didn't have any white spots. And then later on, I could clean them out. But I think I would resist this piece just because there's quite a bit of, of leaf shapes. All right. What do you think so far? 
So you could get it a lot darker in here. You could use NASA blue down, down here at the base and then go lighter. You could use some violet. The choice is yours. You could stream some more pink coming off of that sea anemone like you would if you were doing a um, flower picture. You cast some of that flower color into the background where well, you can do the same thing with seashells. All right, I'm going to, first of all, take my brush with my um, Everclear here, my little Everclear. I'm going to stick my brush into that. I'm going to dry it just a little bit on my towel. I didn't, uh, I didn't squeeze it. I just dried it a little bit, and I'm going to create a bit of wave action behind here. And then I'm going to touch it. Going to go again, and I see a hair. So if you got a hair, it's not a good thing. I tell my student the hairs are extra. Okay, I think I got it. All right, I'm going to pick up a bit more Everclear. Just dab my brush so it doesn't run all over. And I'm just trying to create the idea that there's waves coming through here. And I would have put color in here, but just some wave action in, in here. Maybe I'll do a little wave action in here coming through. It wouldn't stop because there's a leaf, right? I can wiggle it. Come back, get a bit more. And this color is a little bit stiffer than this color. So you can see the runs are better. This looks nice. This is good here. I like it. All right, now I'm going to spray. So don't get too excited with the spraying because once you've done too much of it, you can't take it back, right? So this is kind of your chance to kind of look. I see one more thing I want to do. I just want to add, a, I just want to consolidate this a little bit down there. All right, I think we're ready. Okay, so now I'm going to spray it and I'm gonna sort of stay back from it. And I did two sprays. You can see it's running quite effectively here. Yeah. Quite effectively here. You can see that's good up here. I need to hit here and I need to come and hit over here. So I may just do this to protect what I got. All right, now look at that. So almost too much here, but it, it, I can smooth it if I wanted to, but I actually don't mind it. And then here's my, my wave action here. And then I take my my sponge, I make it into a little taco. And I just want to come out here. And obviously I would work a lot more diligently if I was doing this in a seminar, but this gives you an idea. I soften the edges a bit. So, so it doesn't go from white to color. I just soften the edges a bit. And I could eliminate some of that texture if I chose to. Now, I don't see enough of it here, so I'm just going to do just a little bit there. So I'm just coming over here, and I'm just catching the edge of the, of the work. I'm just creating a mood, that's it. All I'm doing is I want to create a mood. And then if I had this resisted, I'd take this off, this would be protected. I need to make sure that I have these sitting on top that is really going to show my starfish amongst this debris. 
All right, the same with this. I need to make sure that I see the edge of that, that I don't have a fuzzy edge to my starfish or to my sand dollar here. And sometimes I take my pen and I also, I also do a little fine pen line and get a couple of nice little pen lines on the edge, which helps to create that, that change. So what do you think? Love it. It gives it's an it's a nice effect, doesn't it? I'm gonna change Beautiful. change cameras here if I can find out how to do that. Whoop. One minute and I'll be back. Yeah, it looks beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So here we are back again. All right. so I hope I mean, it's a lot, right? It's it's a lot to I, know. I learned a lot. I I have a piece that I'm going to have to go back and do some more work on. Well, that's great. I mean, I, hopefully it was helpful for you. I do have the study if you're interested.